Ever pondered how the future of food production looks like, especially considering our rapidly growing population? By the year 2050, we're projected to be a planet of 10 billion humans. That's a whole lot of mouths to feed. And while agricultural production has been ramping up to meet this growing demand, we're hitting a plateau. Simply put, we are not on track to produce enough food for everyone in our increasingly crowded world. Complicating things further, climate change is turning up the heat, literally. Rising temperatures are predicted to exacerbate extreme weather and droughts, posing additional threats to our food sources. It's a daunting picture, isn't it? But don't despair, as scientists, farmers, and engineers are stepping up to the plate. They're exploring innovative ways to combat these challenges, and one promising avenue of research is something you might have learned in biology class. Photosynthesis. You've probably heard about photosynthesis, right? But do you really understand what it entails? Well, let's unravel this fascinating process that sustains life on our planet. Photosynthesis, in its simplest form, is a process that transforms sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water into usable energy. This energy is stored in the form of a carbohydrate, like a basic sugar molecule called glucose. Now the magic of photosynthesis happens inside tiny structures within plant cells called chloroplasts. Picture these chloroplasts as miniature factories where the sunlight is the power source, carbon dioxide and water are the raw materials, and glucose is the finished product. So how does this all come together? First, the chloroplasts capture sunlight, specifically in the thylakoids, which are like tiny green coins filled with a pigment known as chlorophyll. The sunlight energizes the electrons within the chlorophyll, kick-starting the process. This energy is then used to break apart water molecules, releasing oxygen, a byproduct we're all quite fond of, considering we need it to breathe. But wait, there's more. As the water molecules break apart, they release hydrogen. This hydrogen is vital for the next step of photosynthesis. The energized electrons, along with the hydrogen from the water, are used to convert carbon dioxide into glucose. This transformation happens during the Calvin cycle, or light-independent reactions, in a part of the chloroplast called the stroma. So, to sum up, photosynthesis is a two-part process. The first part uses sunlight to generate energized electrons and hydrogen. The second part uses these products, along with carbon dioxide, to produce glucose. And what does the plant do with this glucose? It uses it as a source of energy to grow, reproduce, and generally do all the things that make a plant a plant. And voila! That's photosynthesis, the process that not only gives us our green landscapes but also the oxygen we breathe. This process is a fundamental building block of life, a solar-powered miracle that plays a crucial role in feeding our growing world. Now let's dive deeper into the microscopic world where photosynthesis takes place. Imagine if you will a bustling city within a plant cell. This city is called a chloroplast, an organelle that is the site of photosynthesis. Now within this chloroplast city, there are two main areas the thylakoids, and the stroma. The thylakoids are like solar panels, stacked into coin-like structures, and they are the first stop in the photosynthesis process. Their green color comes from a pigment called chlorophyll, which absorbs sunlight and kicks off the first stage of photosynthesis, known as the light-dependent reactions. When sunlight hits the chlorophyll, it's like igniting a tiny spark. This spark energizes the electrons within the chlorophyll, setting off a chain of events that lead to the production of two crucial molecules, ATP, and NADPH. And here's the best part, this process also releases oxygen as a byproduct, which means that every breath we take is thanks to photosynthesis. Now let's move to the second part of the city, the stroma. This is where the Calvin cycle, or light-independent reactions, take place. It's like the manufacturing district of the chloroplast city. Here, carbon dioxide is taken from the atmosphere and using the energy from ATP and NADPH, is transformed into a simple sugar called G3P. This sugar is the building block for more complex carbohydrates which the plant uses for growth and energy storage. The chloroplast then recharges ready to start the process all over again. It's a continuous cycle, a marvel of nature's efficiency, taking in carbon dioxide and sunlight and producing oxygen and sugars. So essentially photosynthesis is the ultimate recycling process transforming light into life. This microscopic world within each plant cell holds the key to understanding how we can potentially increase food production and combat world hunger. The more we learn about photosynthesis, the closer we get to unlocking its full potential. But why is understanding photosynthesis so critical to addressing our future food crisis? Well, let's break it down. 
Photosynthesis is the process that powers life on Earth. It's the tiny engine in every green leaf that turns sunlight into food, fuels growth, and releases oxygen. It's the process that allows plants to grow, which in turn feed animals, including us humans. Now imagine if we could make this process more efficient. If we could supercharge photosynthesis, we could potentially increase crop yields providing more food for a rapidly growing population. That's where photosynthesis research comes in. Scientists are studying photosynthesis in depth, aiming to understand every minute detail of how it works. They are exploring ways to tweak the process to make it more efficient, more robust, and more adaptable to different environmental conditions. The goal? To help plants grow faster, bigger, and under harsher conditions, thereby increasing the amount of food we can produce. Let's take an example. Researchers have discovered a way to increase photosynthetic efficiency by altering a plant's photorespiration process. Photorespiration is a process that occurs in plants, where some of the oxygen produced during photosynthesis is used up, reducing a plant's growth potential. By modifying this process, scientists were able to increase the growth of crops by as much as 40%. Another exciting area of research is the development of crops that can photosynthesize more efficiently under different light conditions. For instance, some crops are being engineered so that they can better utilize the full spectrum of light, not just the specific wavelengths they naturally absorb. This could lead to crops that can grow faster and yield more food. In essence, photosynthesis research is not just about understanding how plants grow, it's about harnessing this knowledge to develop innovative solutions to one of humanity's most pressing challenges, feeding a growing population in a changing climate. And that's how photosynthesis research could be our key to feeding the future. So next time you see a green leaf, remember it's not just a leaf, it's a tiny factory working to sustain life on Earth.